So now, obviously, there was a lot more text on the clipboard than what will fit inside of that little box. So we can see there's a little red icon here, and this is telling me that there is overflow. So there's too much text for this text field. So I can click this, and now you can see that I have a new icon here, which is basically telling me I'm about to create a linked container. So I can come in and draw another text field here, and we can see that it's actually, the overflow has gone into this new text field. And we can see there's a little line going to it uh, telling me that it's done that. But there's still too much text inside of here, so I can click it again. I can come down and draw another text field out. So now it's linked to this one as well. So um, let me test this. So here's the text. Now, these are all separate text fields, but if I come in and I start typing, we can see that it's flowing all amongst those different containers properly. Now these text fields are still independent text fields, so I can actually you know, move this thing around, um, I can you know, change the, the color of this specific text field, um, even though it's linked to the other text fields. Uh, so you can do some really advanced text effects, very similar to the type of thing you can do in InDesign. So again, now I have a lot of text in this text field. I'd like to be able to read this in multiple columns. So all I have to do is we come down here, and you can see all of the new properties that you have for text. There's a ton of new properties. So everything, every possible thing that you, you want to do with text, you can now do here. But we can see down under container and flow, we have a columns property. So I can just change this to two, and we can see automatically there's now two columns of text here. Um, I can do things like uh, increase the gap in between them, um, and if I test this, we can see that the text selects properly as well. So it's selecting down the first column over to the next column. Um, so, you know, again, very, very advanced text stuff, which has now been made um, very easy. So I can come and, and create a ton of columns here. You probably would never want it like this, little, 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 but you could if you wanted to. Okay, so another thing I want to show you, which is obviously very important here in Japan, is um, international um, text, doing international text. So Flash has always been really good at doing Latin-based languages, so you know English, Spanish, things like that. It's always been horrible at doing things like Japanese, Arabic, um, you know, non-Latin character sets. So this has been made much easier um, in Flash CS5. So we get the text tool. Again, I'm going to select TLF text. And uh, for this, I have some uh, Japanese text that I got. Where is it? Let me just open this up. So, to be honest with you, I have no idea what this says, so I'm hoping that it doesn't say anything bad. Um, I don't think so. So, I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard. And to get the TLF text, I'll draw another text field, and I'll paste this in. And I'm going to get a font that's a little bit better. <laughs> what? What is it? What is it? Forget it? Okay. I, it's nothing bad, I know that. It was off of a, a news website. So, um, so here, here we have, we can see it. So I'm using Arial Unicode. So it's actually rendering pretty nicely. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, Japanese people read text vertically. Um, and this is something that was next to impossible to do in previous versions of Flash. People, some people were able to do it with ActionScript, but it was very complicated. Well, now we have the ability, we can see at the top here, 
um, we can change the orientation of the text. So I can change it from horizontal to vertical. And now you can see, is this actually correct? Is this, is that correct? Okay. Um, it's hard for me to know if it's correct because, yeah, I can't read it. But, um, so now it's actually taken that text and displayed it vertically the way that it should be. And another thing to that is that I can now select, and it's selecting vertically. Um, so that's the way it should select. So it shouldn't select, you know, left or right. Um, this, this type of thing, again, was very, very difficult to do in previous versions of Flash. <laughs> And this is an editable text field, so I can actually come in and I can edit the text, and you can see it's flowing uh, the way it should up and down the columns. So this stuff has been made extremely easy in CS5. So I can actually draw with this, and you can see it actually follows the curves of my mouse. Um, so there's actually some real potential for these tools. Um, and once we release the documentation, I think you know, there's going to be some real power um, in this tool. If you don't know how to do ActionScript 3, um, and, and they get more complex than that, so if I select it again, uh, let's see, let's go to animation, and let's say I want to know how to actually be able to move this movie clip with the arrow keys on the keyboard. So again, I can just double click that and test it. And now I'm you know, tapping on the keys to move this movie clip around. So if you're, very, if you're very experienced with Flash, this is pretty basic. But if you don't know ActionScript 3, this is really great because now I can actually come inside of here um, and it's actually, we can see there's comments here that actually uh, explain you know, uh, how this actually works. So here we can see I have a key down event on the stage, um, and I'm basically testing for the different arrow keys and moving that clip uh, based on that. So very helpful uh, to, to learn how to do this stuff. Now let's say I created, um, let me undo this here. No, uh, that's not gonna work. Let's say I created a bunch of action script in here, um, and, I, and I wanna save this as a snippet. Well, this is also really easy to do. I can go to the Code Snippets panel, and under here, we can see we have Create New Code Snippet. So if I do that, I get this little window that's asking me to basically give it a title. So let's say, Cool Code. Now, if I have this code already in the Actions panel, I can just say Autofill. Oh, and it doesn't work. It's supposed to work. Well, just imagine that there's a lot of nice code in the actions panel now. Uh, so, let's say I wanted to type it, I could type it. In the final release version, I'm assuming it's going to fill with the code from the actions panel. Um, so let's just assume that's the case, and click OK, and now I have my, uh, my custom code snippet here inside of the panel. Um, so again, this is helpful not only for beginners, but also for more advanced action script developers.